Welcome to Parnell Park for this Dublin Senior Hurling chip encounter, Championship encounter between St. Jude's and Whitehall, Column Kill. It's simple enough for Whitehall. If they win, they're going through for St. Jude's. It's a little bit more complicated. A win would likely put them through, but it might not be enough. For Whitehall, Column Kill, a draw for them should be enough. It's a breezy enough day here in Parnell Park. It's warm, but it's overcast, and that breeze is picking up it's kind of swirling around it's a massive weekend of championship hurling so much already settled and we know even some of the quarter final pairings at this stage we'll know the last of them this evening for sure although going into today we kind of know most of them we probably know three of the four the referee in the middle ready to get the game underway but first let's have a look at the two teams that have been named by St. Jude's and Whitehall Column Kill. For Whitehall, Column Kill, Owen O'Donnell is the name that jumps off that team sheet of Stallworth of Dublin already, despite his young years. Ronan Murray is a very experienced goalkeeper. He can certainly move around that goal and stop shots. He's a very accomplished shot stopper. They look, I guess, to Sean Foran at wing forward. He's got experience for Dublin at under 20 uh, in both football and hurling, and he's a man who can get scores and get things moving for them. For St. Jude's, there's a few familiar names, including guys who are part of that team that got to two county finals a couple of years ago. Unfortunately for Jude's, they lost both. Danny Sutcliffe is back and raring for action. Dermot McLaughlin at corner forward is a dual star who can certainly move around the pitch. Dippy is his nickname. Uh, in goal, Ger Hogan has been a really good find for them. He moved over from Galway. He was absolutely fantastic against St. Bridget's. Fiona Ryan Breen, another man who can get scores if he's given the time and the space. Whitehall Column Kill certainly need to watch that half forward line because Shane O'Brien, who's been around Jude's for a while but is only playing with them this year, he can get scores too. He's a, a clear man who was actually coaching the team and they realised he was quite decent so they said, you know what, you can coach but also let's get you playing. There are some question marks, by the way, about St. Jude's fullback Owen Grant and whether or not he'll be available. He's carrying an injury into this one, a hip injury. He'd be a huge loss if he couldn't start but uh, they will hope that he can a start no confirmation as of yet whether the Jude's number three will or will not be in the team that begins this match a very good afternoon to you I hope you're enjoying the weekend the second weekend of August we've got the temperature unfortunately we don't have the sunshine at the moment we are very very fortunate to be here anyone who's at the match will tell you that it's like winning the lotto being able to go to these games because well the tickets for them are like gold dust and it's a privilege to be here it's a privilege to bring you this game i hope you enjoy it remember you can keep uh, the conversation going online just as you would have a conversation if you were in the stand and you can do that by going to at dublin gaa already this weekend it has been confirmed that st vincent's will play bally Bowden st enders and lucan will meet kilmacud croaks in the quarterfinals it was most likely confirmed that st bridget's will play kula uh, that's not a hundred percent yet but it's looking very likely today the the winner of this would go on to play Nathena, but that depends maybe on what Falks do because Falks still have a chance if they can win today and uh, they'll be looking for a bit of a favour from um, St. Jude's and then it comes down to scoring difference. Falks and St. Jude's drew on the first day and um, if the two teams are level on points at the end of the group, it will be decided on scoring difference. Normally it's decided on head-to-head, -head, but as we say, Jude and uh, Fox drew. We'll keep you in touch with everything that's happening in that other game between Fox and St. Bridget's. It could be a complicated day. John McCarthy preparing his team as the crowd. Watch on John McCarthy, the... Uh, St. Jude's coach, uh, a Cork man who hurled with the team for many, many years. St. Jude's, I suppose, being in the suburban area they are, they are going to attract a, a lot of country players, and there's there's nothing wrong with that. If you live in Dublin, sometimes it just doesn't make practical sense to go up and down to your home club. I know that myself, granted, it's at the lowest possible level of Junior F. Whitehall, Column Kill. Well, for their manager, Ger O'Connor, it's been an interesting hurling journey. He actually played hurling with Tyrone, works with both the senior footballers and the senior hurlers uh, as a kind of a facilitator. And um, he's got a great uh, 
panel of selectors including Carlos David Galway. David of course played for Carlo for a long long time, a very experienced man. It is the calm before the storm as these two clash in the Dublin Senior Hurling Championship. Our referee today, by the way, is Sean Stack. And now Whitehall Column Kills get into position. So just to run you through it again, a win for Whitehall puts them through. A win for St. Jude's puts them through if Fox lose. A win for St. Jude's puts them through if Fox draw also. Uh, Jude's could still go out if Fox beat St. Bridget's and better Jude's scoring difference. Two teams who have never won a Dublin Senior Hurling Championship. At the moment, the focus is staying in the Dublin Senior Hurling Championship for 2020. This most unusual season, but it's still a season. It's better than nothing. Danny Sutcliffe firing one in. The Whitehall column kill tried to defend it there with uh, Kevin Nangle on it, the captain. Eddie Moran, son of the great Paddy, goes out to Lemo, as they call him, Luke McCarthy. St. Jude's try and bring it back up the park. Kieran Mangan. The captain, one of the most consistent performers in the team. Into the corner forward position it goes and Dearman McLaughlin uses his pace to get there. McLaughlin looking to raise the white flag for the first time in this game. And he has. That was lovely movement by St. Jude's. They used the space, used the corners really, really well. Ronan Murray, the goalkeeper, sends it out long. The son of two Olympic gymnasts. And we talked about that uh, before the game. We talked about his flexibility and his ability to move around the goal. I imagine a lot of that is genetics, but most of it is hard work. And St. Jude's do have a late change in their team. Starting for them is uh, Owen McLaughlin, as we suspected. And I think he is in for uh, Owen Grant, who may not have made it. And St. Jude's go for a second point, and St. Jude's get a second point. point from the angle so Whitehall column kills already behind here Mark Maguire goes long down the park but misses the intended target no benches of course the subs in the stand just 200 in for this game including players and mentors Column Kills also have made a late change. Dara Gray. Well, that was expected. That's a real launcher. But again, it just has a little bit too much meat on it. Ronan Murray goes long, trying to get under it as Kieran Murphy. It breaks kindly for David Kieran Davy. Solid hand pass. Kieran Mangan. It's going to be won by Luke McCarthy. Intercepted by Mangan. Mangan gets bottled up there. Whitehall column kills absolutely ambushing him and now trying to drive on is Mikey Noonan. Gray goes for it, but doesn't get it. He's unlucky. Sutcliffe couldn't make it stick. Good work by Whitehall, Column Kills. Down the line it goes from Kieran Murphy. Cahal Ryan was the target, but it's hoovered up by Mangan. McLaughlin brings it out of defence. Well taken out in front by Manus Malone. Manus Malone from a long way out couldn't keep it on target. The DJ couldn't spin it over. Mangan can't take it. Onto it now, Shane O'Brien. 
the experienced Clare man inside. He is on the Clare Limerick border, but I think he's on the Clare side. It's swung at there by Cahill Ryan. It was Sean Ford, I beg your pardon, who got forward there for uh, Whitehall Cullum Kills. Now running onto it is Shane O'Brien. Shane O'Brien. Well, you can see why they think so much of him in St. Jude's after a good score like that. A multi-talented sportsman was part of an Irish combine that went to uh, Australia for a tour of the international rules. Shane O'Brien gets in the way again but couldn't get the second ball. It was robbed by Luke McCarthy. Referee playing advantage there. Interestingly enough, Owen O'Donnell has actually gone into the half forward line. Now that has happened before for Whitehall Cullum Kills. And it has happened uh, in a very effective way. At the moment, Whitehall Cullum Kills have a sweeper. Hasn't stopped from conceding three points yet to score. Into the square it goes, and I think that's the solid hand of Mark Maguire who takes it, then flicks it out to Aidan Donovan. Whitehall Colin Kings turn it over. It's Owen O'Donnell. O'Donnell comes off the heels of Tom Devlin, but then it's gathered and sent home. And all of a sudden, the deficit is wiped. Really good finish by Cahill Ryan. Well, Owen O'Donnell charging through. It flicked into the path of Cahill Ryan, and Cahill Ryan absolutely buried it. Referee gives another free in. Well, Ono O'Donnell's charge created that goal, but it was finished by the bull, Cahill Ryan. And now they have a free and they can go a point up. Lee Gannon striking this one. Comfortable enough angle for a player like Gannon. And he floats that one over and Whitehall column kills for the first time in the game lead. Ger Hogan, not much he could do about the goal. Whitehall column kills settling in now and leading. There are options there, but he goes for it himself. Oh, it's just left short by John Carthy. And then a miscue from the goalkeeper, Ronan Murray, and St. Jude's have the line ball. Aidan Donovan, the Corkman, who only joined last year. Flicked into the path here of... Uh, Cummins but Whitehall call him kill make really heavy weather of getting that one out of defence now it's Kia Murphy Cahill Ryan just couldn't get it up into the hand it's taken by Alan O'Byrne Stray Hurley and they're free for St. Jude's Danny Sutcliffe from right out the country. The breeze is kind of swirling around, but it isn't that strong. Plenty of air on that one, but not enough accuracy. Second wide for St. Jude's.
Line ball which Lee Cannon will strike. Wanted to take it quickly, jogging over to him was Kieran Murphy. Lovely little cut by Gannon. Kieran Murphy, lovely pass. Is it met by a lovely finish, Eddie Moran? Fantastic strike by Eddie Moran. Just out of minor, but adapting very, very nicely to the top grade. It's a risky one from Hogan, but it does work out. Alan Connolly, the 19-year-old, takes it, gets it out to Aidan Donovan. Bit of a blind one from Donovan. And again, when Whitehall Cullum kills of a sweeper, maybe those kind of balls aren't the best. Dara Gray gave it back to Kevin Nangle. Whitehall Cullum kills go direct. Brilliantly taken by Cottle Ryan. Whitehall Cullum kills look to extend their lead. And it's waved wide. That's a disappointing enough wide. Good take. Danny Sutcliffe leaves it a little bit short. Intercepted by Connor Cummins. It's a little blind from Connor Cummins, and Shane O'Brien intercepts it. He's switched wings. Dieran McLaughlin, uh, he, he's already got a nice one from the wing. And that's a really good score by Dieran McLaughlin. One between them. Fantastic catch by Mark Maguire initially, but then he dropped it. Whitehall Cullum kills him behind again. This should be sailed over, and it is. Oh, no, Donald. He can do it in the backs and the forwards, Owen O'Donnell. He can do it in the commentary box as well. He was part of the uh, Dubs TV coverage in the last couple of years. St. Jude's already having to make a switch because Manus Malone is limping off. Eddie Moran trying to get there is Kieran Murphy. Police by Aidan Donovan. Jude sweep it up. Good run here from John Carthy. Carthy still going. Carthy off the stick. Wide, but not by much. Carthy well capable of getting scores. Scored three from play against uh, St. Bridget's. Line ball, Whitehall, Cullum kill. I look Connor coming over to take it. Well, I look Connor retrieved the slitter, but he's not going to take it. He gives it off to his midfield partner, Eddie Moran. Intercepted. A long one from Tom Devlin. Doesn't work out. Four wides already for St. Jude's. The target was Noonan. Noonan was pushed in the back there by David Kiernan. First year playing uh, senior hurling David Kiernan. Put in an awful lot of work over lockdown and made himself fit and got himself up to a level to play senior. Won lots of admirers around St. Jude's for doing so as well. Remember to follow what's happening elsewhere, including that Fox St. Bridget's game. Keep an eye on the Dublin GA social media channels. This one let go by Cahal Ryan, who's having a fine game. Goal earlier on, now a brilliant point from a free from the famous Ryan family of Collins Avenue. Davy Kiernan. He missed Hughes. Three between them.
Point hole, Cullum Kill back in the top grade for the first time in a long, long while. Dara Gray's ball is intercepted. Cut out by Aidan Donovan. Pops it off to Kieran Mangan. Mangan couldn't find his intended target inside Kieran Hogan. Well, he could, but Hogan just couldn't get the ball in hand. That's another miscue. Shovel inside to Sutcliffe from Devlin. Sutcliffe looking for room. Sutcliffe gets the shot away. Sutcliffe gets a fine, fine score. It's what you'd expect from him. The Dublin hurler and former New York footballer. Picked up cleverly by Niall O'Connor. Niall O'Connor from an awkward enough angle. Stays in, comes off the woodwork. Now it's Lee Gannon turning and twisting and shooting. Good score, Lee Gannon. Really entertaining game so far. Always keep your eye on it, never give up on it. That's what Lee Gannon did, that Lee Gannon did there, despite the attentions of uh, Owen McLaughlin. And we're at the water break. Whitehall Cullum Kills leading by three, one five to five points. Cahill Ryan's goal making a big difference so far. These some of the highlights. Not a good score from McLaughlin. Jutes have had some wides, but they're not afraid to go for it, as you can see. Shane O'Brien getting in there. Owen O'Donnell making the goal here. He can claim the assist, although it did clip off the heels of, I think it was Devlin, and fell into the path of Cahill Ryan and Cahill Ryan absolutely buried it. The bull, as they call him. That's a fine strike from a free. And Whitehall column kills. They can, they can work it into good positions when they're in a mind to, as you can see. McLaughlin always danger from angles. The dual player. Fox, five points, Bridget's 1-4, latest score, Bridget's have just got a goal there. So Bridget's at the moment on their way to topping the group, and Whitehall column kill at the moment on their way in to the quarterfinals along with Bridget's, but a lot of hurling to do between now and the end of this game. Scramble on, John Carty, free out for St. Jude's. Mark McGuire is going to let it off to Danny Sutcliffe. Mark McGuire has been around a while. He's still only 23, but he was playing senior hurling at the age of 17. Sutcliffe. That's going to drop inside the square. Oh! It's deflected in. I think it came off the hurley of Connor Cummins. And St. Jude's. And Whitehall column kill are all square. He just misjudged the flight of a Cummins and he can't blame the sun in his eyes because it's overcast. Well, that is a stroke of luck for St. Jude's. Can they take advantage of it? Here comes Mangan. Danny Sutcliffe, who will claim the goal, I'm sure. Sutcliffe, oh, that's beautiful. He makes it look so easy, but to do that at the pace he was doing it, that's incredible. Jude's back in front by one. Onto the hurley of Kyle Ryan. Ryan outside to Eddie Moran. Oh, it's dangerously dropping. There could be another goal here. Fantastic save from the stick of Lee Cannon. Wonderful work from Ger Hogan. Well, I spoke to Ronan Joyce of St. Jude's. 
before the game and he really spoke Hogan up. He said, we're very lucky to have a couple of very decent goalkeepers in the squad. And well, right there, you saw why Roland Joyce, one of his teammates, who's out injured today, by the way, would speak so highly of him. Whitehall, Cullum Kills, turn it back over. Intercepted brilliantly by Jeremy McLaughlin. McLaughlin had options, but left that one short. Fiona Rian Breen going down to try and charge the keeper, Ronan Murray. Well, Rian Breen got a good point earlier in the game. I might have credited that to uh, Darren McLaughlin when we were showing the replay, but uh, it was a Rian Breen. What a save that was. Point blank range. Lee Gannon would be desperately disappointed not to have scored it, though. Tom Devlin. Comes to the stick of Aidan Donovan. Lovely bounce pass to Alan Connolly. The 19 year old takes off. Fiona Rian Breen. John Carthy just fell away from him. Jeremy McLaughlin. And Jude's lead by two. When they find their rhythm, St. Jude's, they're hard to stop. Batted down by Donovan. Collected by Giles, Paddy Giles. Now up it goes to Niall O'Connor. O'Connor trying to escape the shackles. Lee Gannon is the aim. McLaughlin gets out to it, but Gannon has stolen it. Now can he kick it home? Oh yes he can! Lost his hurley, but it didn't matter. He had the footballing skills to get the goal. It was a beautiful pickpocketing of Owen McLaughlin. And a really good improvised finish. This game has really, really taken off. Mangan. Intercepted. Driven back down the park by Eddie Moore. Looking for Cahill Ryan. Ryan up against Alan O'Byrne. Ryan. Can't keep this one on target. Whitehall come kills by one. You'd be a brave person to call this game. Oh, McLaughlin. Dearvin McLaughlin is the aim. Flicked out of the fence, trying to pull on it there with Shane O'Brien. Got something on it, but could only guide it into the path of a red and white jersey. And that red and white jersey belonged to Connor Cummins. Dara Gray, the Dublin player, goes diagonal. Kieran Murphy couldn't get to it. St. Jude's have it. And it's... An improvised clearance by McLaughlin, but he does give away the line ball. Well, it's certainly been added to the fact that we're playing in good weather. And um, I heard it said yesterday by... I think it might have been former Carlo footballer Willie Quinlan. He just said that the, some of the, sometimes with, when players come back from the county, they're very, very tired and it's tough on them. Whereas when they're playing club championship now, they're incredibly fresh. And just as I say that, Danny Sutcliffe loses it, but loses it to another Dublin player, Dara Gray. Brilliant turnover from Fiona Rian Breen. Mooring gets his hurley in there. Danny Sutcliffe doesn't give up on it, just taps it inside to Donovan. Donovan is aiming for McLaughlin, who's got plenty of pace. He's up against Kieran Kean Murphy. McLaughlin tried to squeeze in between two. He's held up. Referee says nothing doing. Now it's Shane O'Brien. Shane O'Brien has lost it. That's a little bit loose from Whitehall. Column kills, but to be fair to Niall O'Connor, he does well with it. Dropped by Mark McGuire, who's under lots and lots of pressure. Owen O'Donnell wins it back and wins it free for his team. And despite the fact that we've got probably in or around 150 supporters when you take teams and mentors out of it, they're making quite a noise over on that far side. I hope it's coming across uh, wherever you're watching this. And we're delighted to have you with us on this Sunday afternoon. Many of you want to be here and can't, and it's a privilege to be able to bring you this game. But we hope you're enjoying watching it. Lee Gannon will hope to enjoy scoring a free here. And he does. 
12 points plays 10 when you make the conversion 2-6 217. Cleared by Davy Kiernan. Just hopped away from John Carty. Milo Connor gets inside his man. His man is Alan Connolly. Too much on that for Gannon. Donovan. That's an outstanding ball to John Carty. Carty has a bit of time, has a bit of space. And if there's such a thing as a bad wide, that was it. He hit it wide on the near side. O'Donnell misses it. Mangan sweeps it up. Donovan. Again, too much on that one, but Whitehall Cullen kills. They're sloppy in defence. Gia Murphy left it behind, luckily for him. Connor Cummins is sweeping up the Gooch as they call him because he does look like the Kerry footballer the former Kerry footballer here's Luke McCarthy great catch by Kieran Mangan Aidan Donovan Alan O'Byrne McLaughlin so athletic in getting that one McLaughlin drags it wide Owen O'Donnell using his strength and winning the free. He can play anywhere on the park, Owen O'Donnell. Lee Gannon is coming out to strike this one for Whitehall Column Kills. It was an un unorthodox strike, but it works. A fourth point for Gannon. The gap is three. Kiernan. Put it in front of John Carty. We put a bit too much in front of John Carty. Niall O'Connor. Niall O'Connor not particularly pleased with his clearance. Tom Devlin, who missed that opening day draw with Falks because of his suspension. Mark McGuire. Across it goes to Fiona Ray and Breen. Picked up on the run brilliantly by Hogan. Hogan has a go. It's wide. Strength shown there by uh, Kevin Nangle. Trying to get it into the hand of Mikey Noonan. Owen O'Donnell into help out. Free for Whitehall to come kills, and Mikey Noonan is giving it the full Milan fist pump. Not long out of minor, Mikey Noonan. Gannon has a big swing if that makes sense but it is effective Whitehall column kills leading 2-8 to 1-7 Connolly goes out to Tom Devlin Devlin invites the forwards onto that one Kieran Hogan was there and Jude's get a point that they desperately needed 
And it is Kieran Hogan who gets it. That was an important score for Jude who hadn't scored for about five minutes. Kieran Mangan. Left behind by Luke McCarthy. But he does get it on the second attempt, much to his credit, despite being harassed by Oreen Breen. Runs out of room. Tom Devlin. Over is the shout for Devlin. He does go for it. And that is a wonderful score by Tom Devlin. Played minor hurling for Dublin, also plays senior football for the club. Ronan Murray goes long. Mangan trying to get away from O'Donnell. Free out for St. Jude's. Remember at Dub GA official. That's where you can keep an eye on everything that's going on between Fox and St. Bridget's, a game that may or may not have ramifications for this game or the two teams involved, depending on the results. Sutcliffe. Had the length, but not the accuracy. Devlin's getting under this one and takes it wonderfully. And then they miss Q. Forward it goes, they're looking for Noonan. Can Noonan get there? No, he's beaten to it. I think it was, uh, I don't know, Byrne who got across there for St. Jude's. Alan Connolly. Niall O'Connor is charging in there. It's a free out for Jude's. And now we're into injury time. Oh, Devlin made a bags of that. Here's Kieran Mangan. Lee Gannon has it. Gannon doesn't have the room to shoot, so he runs. Pursued by Tom Devlin. Inside to Noonan. Away it goes from Kiernan. Gannon gets it back. Kieran Murphy's in loads of space. He'll have to go for it here. And he does. But it's to the near side and wide and that's it at half time in a belter so far Whitehall Club kills lead St. Jude's by 2-8 to 1-9 so as it stands they are joining St. Bridget's in the quarterfinals and uh, they would likely play Nafina but there's a long way to go yes what a half of hurling it was what a game from that man number three on his back but he's not playing as number three Owen O'Donnell, who uh, gives Danny Sutcliffe his Dublin, fist, uh, uh, Dublin teammate a fist pump. And uh, you can see it already. Both of these uh, sets of players looking tired because they've left it all out there. They've still got enough, hopefully, for a good second half. And we'll expect a good second half after what we saw in the first half. It certainly hasn't disappointed. 11, 14 points to 12 when you, when you make the conversion. Whitehall, Cullum Kill leading at the break by 2-8 to 1-9. And uh, we'll have a look at some of the uh, highlights from the first half in a few minutes uh, because there was uh, some good moments in it. But uh, first, we'll take a bit of a break. We'll be back very, very shortly. Uh, it is halftime uh, on Dubs TV in the Dublin Senior Hurling Championship. As it stands, Whitehall are going through. But as we say, another half of hurling to come. At the halftime score, Whitehall, Column Kills, 2-8, St. Jude's, 1-9.
Welcome back, and we're back underway in the Dublin Senior Hurling Championship. As it stands, Whitehall Column Kills will be joining St. Bridget's in the next round. The ball is farmed down the park by Sean Foran. Might break here for Mark McGuire and does. Whitehall Column Kills tried to steal it back to Owen O'Donnell. What a game he has had. He's worked really, really, really hard. Here's John Carthy. John Carthy to Devlin. Devlin into a space where there was no one really there. Bridget's leading against Falks 1-9 to 11 points. They're at half time in that game as John Carty launches it forward. Jeremy McLaughlin couldn't take it first time. Can he get it second time despite being policed by Murphy? Tried to squeeze it through for Alan Connolly. Couldn't find him and it's cleared by Whitehall Cullen Kills. It's a fairly loose clearance though. Devlin lets it off for his teammate. Now it's into the hand from Kieran Mangan. There was a chop down. It's a free into St. Jude's. Danny Sutcliffe guides it over. It's a good start to the half for St. Jude's. They started well in the first half. They've started well in the second. Jude's clogging up the middle. They're such a hard-working team. Here's Kieran Mangan, Shane O'Brien. Danny Sutcliffe. Just said, you know what, drop it in yourself. Kieran Hogan. Hogan's route to goal is blocked. Taken by Nangle. Good work by Alan Connolly. Nangle gets it on the second attempt. Going to be intercepted by Kieran Mangan. Mangan had a look up. Sees that Tom Devlin was at a better angle, but then Tom Devlin was pulled over by Mikey Noonan. Here's Kieran Mangan. Good pass. Alan Connolly. That's going to drop inside. McLaughlin's going to try and get there. It's batted away, but only as far as the St. Jude's player. And Orion Breen couldn't get the strike he wanted. Good hook. I think it was Luke McCarthy, Lemo as they call him. And now he's on it again. Has a second go at this. Making kind of heavy work of that one. McLaughlin has done really well to St. Jude's forward. And it goes out and it will be a line ball to Whitehall Column Kills. 1-10 now for St. Bridget's against Fox. Lovely line, Paul. Just wouldn't quite drop for Noonan, and Jude's will get it away. Lots of mistakes, lots of drop balls, but it comes from pure pressure. Here's Davy Kiernan. What an intercept that was from Niall O'Connor. Now Noonan. Kiernan throws himself in there. Sean Foran. Great stuff by Foran. Out in front was the forward, trying to put it into the path of Owen O'Donnell. O'Donnell is fouled, and it's a free in. Really good work between uh, Gray and O'Donnell, or Gannon and O'Donnell. And Whitehall Cullum Kills have a certainty of a free. Gannon into the path of O'Donnell, and the foul coming from the St. Jude's defender, who just was a little bit overzealous with the hurley. Here's Gannon. Whitehall looking for their first score of the second half. Nicely struck. No such thing as an easy score at this stage of the Dublin Senior Hurling Championship. Here's McLaughlin. Mark McGuire. 
Bream Bream meets it. Chasing him, Luke McCarthy. Luke McCarthy does really well, but Orion Breen gets it on the second attempt. Free in given. Good advantage played by Sean Stack, the referee. Danny Sutcliffe, who's already got 1-3 in this game. You can make that 1-4. Might break for, for Carty. Carthy is tripped up by Ola Donnell, referee playing advantage. Mark McGuire. That's a blind ball. Connor Cummins has a look up. Pops it for Giles, but it's going to fall for Eddie Moore. And the two confuse each other, and now it's Alan Connolly who steals it back for Jude. Hits it over to McLaughlin. McLaughlin has Orion Breen in front of him. Swept away by McCarthy. Orion Breen steals it back off him. At a tight angle, but he should still be able to put this one over. No, he can't. Whitehall column kills of a man down at the moment. Danny Sutcliffe, he's got some fine scores in this game. That another one. Bridget still leading by one against uh, Fox. Kevin Nangle, the captain. Looks seriously hurt, he'll try and drive on if he possibly can. Remember you can Keep up with the score of the other game that's going on at the moment through at Dub GA Official. Is that the Twitter address? Or account name? Do you say address on Twitter? I'm not sure. No, it's an email address and a Twitter account. You know what I mean. Now they've had to make a change because uh, their captain, Kevin Nangle, has gone off. And coming in is a man who was named to start Sean Giles. Just out of secondary school. This is a big moment for the young man. He was named in the starting 15 at corner forward. He's actually got in now a corner back. Roland Murray goes long. Good ball by Niall O'Connor. Whitehall column kills. Finding it hard to get possession inside that 45. Finding it hard to get... Scoring chances, Owen O'Donnell tries to do something about it, and Owen O'Donnell, well, I thought it might have gone over, but nope, the umpires stay wide. Took on the responsibility. Whitehall and Cullum Kills have already hit two wides in the second half, ball dropped in by Cummins. Gannon couldn't get under it. Away it goes from McLaughlin. Intercepted though by Mikey Noonan. And for now, that stat will remain two wides because that's a good score. Mikey Noonan from good old Whitehall Cullum kills stock. Here's Niall O'Connor. That'll be intercepted by Tom Devlin. Whitehall Cullum kills, turn it over. But it's a throw ball, so frustrating for Whitehall. And they've not only given away possession, they've practically given St. Jude's a point by giving them a free in that position. Neil Mangan has come in for St. Jude's, by the way. Again, another experienced campaigner for Jude's.
remember if Jude win and Fox lose, Jude's are going through. Fox could win that game and then it comes down to scoring difference. That's if Jude's win. Things could get rather complicated. Danny Sutcliffe tries to complicate them further by bringing Jude's that bit closer to Whitehall column kill and he has. Sutcliffe has got three points in the second half for, White, for uh, St. Jude's. Can Whitehall Column Kills get something here themselves? No, the goalkeeper just watches that bounce wide. They're just not getting the scores. They're just not getting the chances, Whitehall, in the second half. They're still leading, but only by one. It's all square now between St. Bridget's and Fox. What a great catch that was. Danny Sutcliffe. Then he's dispossessed, but it falls for another Jude's man who was rushing in there. Another sub who's come in, Kevin Lehift. Kevin Lehift gets a shot away and hits it wide. Sean Giles. Kieran Hogan pursued him, but Giles got the ball away. However, St. Jude's have it back with Shane O'Brien. Shane O'Brien up for Tom Devlin. Flicked forward, wonderfully won by Spellacy, who got in there. Turning and shooting is Kyle Ryan. A goal in the first half, but a wide right now. Fantastic catch by Danny Sutcliffe, who's thundering into this one. His first half, by the way, was by no means quiet, but he has caught a couple of spectacular balls in the second half and has got a couple of important scores as well. His goal was more down to luck than design a long range free, which was deflected in, but uh, take nothing away from his overall performance so far. So Sutcliffe to level it. And we're all square. Gannon claims he got a poke of a hurley into the arm, but the referee isn't interested. Ball by Devlin. McLaughlin runs onto it. Well taken. Has a runner outside, doesn't go for him. McLaughlin will go himself. And McLaughlin puts St. Jude's in front. And we're at the water break, and I think Whitehall Column Kills would be glad of it. St. Jude's would rather plough through, but. Uh, the water break is there for a very, very good reason, so we have to go to it. Well, it's nicely set up for a grandstand finish, isn't it? St. Jude's leading by one. Whitehall Club kills only managing two points in the second half so far. So let's tell you what's happening with the other game. Fox lead by one there. So as it stands, things are going to be decided on scoring difference. Danny Sutcliffe, he's got some important scores for his team today. St. 
St. Jude's leading now for the first time since the 20th minute. Cliff's radar is on today, that's for certain. I wonder do the players know what's happening in the other game? I wonder do they know what they have to do? I guess for them the focus is just about winning it and then hope that that is enough. But if St. Jude's were to win, St. Bridget's could do them a favour by beating Fox, just to make absolutely certain. So we'll resume with a Whitehall column kill puck out from Ronan Murray. Battled into the path of O'Connor. Scramble on for it. Who's going to show the fight? Who's going to show the skill? Who wants it is the shout from the far side. Not quite sure who it was, but they kind of summed it up nicely. It's intercepted brilliantly by John Carty. Carty's getting away here, using his pace. Carty might go himself. He does. The keeper waves it wide, and the umpires agree. Can Whitehall call him kills? Win a few balls. Here's Niall O'Connor. Connor finding it really hard to shake off Neil Mangan. And it's out for a line ball for St. Jude's. Neil Mangan. Intercepted by Whitehall column kill stick and then taken up by Luke McCarthy. Then he lost it. Now it's into the path of Spellacy. Spellacy looking for a fellow red and white jersey. He has found one, but St. Jude's fight for it and get it back. And Tom Devlin sends it down towards Fiona Rian Breen. And they run out of pitch, and it's out for a line ball to Whitehall Column Kills. Sean Giles intercepted by Carty. He's having a wonderful game. Orion Breen. Giles in pursuit, but Orion Breen has it. He's trying to shake him off. He's got McLaughlin inside. McLaughlin's in space. McLaughlin can't keep it under the crossbar. It's better than nothing, but it should have been three. Wonderfully set up by Orion Breen, who thought his teammate was a cert to get a goal. I think the entire ground thought that. Here's Gannon, who's got over injury to play in this game. And he gets a much needed score for Whitehall column kills. But from a position where uh, St. Jude's should have had a goal and only got a point, they get the point, but then Whitehall column kills essentially wipe it off by getting down the park and scoring one for themselves. Sean Foran is going off. He is being replaced by uh, Rory Kearns. Niall O'Connor, Rory Kearns looking to get into it for the first time since coming in, but that is really well defended by McLaughlin, who tries to find Devlin. He's fouled Hurley rather high on him there, and it's a free out to St. Jude's.
McLaughlin trying to get there now. It's Orion Breen who tries to poke it into the path of McLaughlin. And he has. McLaughlin's in the square. And puts it over the crossbar. Clever finish by McLaughlin. Didn't have much room to work with. May not have beaten the keeper had he kind of kept that one under because he wouldn't have been able to get a whole pile of power or pace on it. But are we coming back for a penalty? No, we're going back for a penalty. So can Danny Sutcliffe get a goal here? It would be a huge boost for St. Jude's. Oh, just about. He didn't strike it particularly well. It found the net. It bounced away from the goalkeeper, Ronan Murray. Well, I know they say players like to try and bounce them in front of the keeper, but the way he struck this and the way the ball bounced so far out from goal, I'm not sure he meant it. But then again, it is Danny Sutcliffe. He's a bit of a magician. You never know. Sutcliffe with the second goal for St. Jude's. Both have had an element of luck. Here's Owen O'Donnell. O'Donnell! Oh, what a finish from Owen O'Donnell. The big man steps up when they've needed him most. Three eleven is twenty points. Two fifteen. That's twenty one points. One between them. One by Niall O'Connor. Mikey Noonan. Noonan turning and twisting, trying to get away from the two defenders that are absolutely stuck to him. Shoveling it up is Davy Kiernan. Kiernan squeezes it out to Devlin, who looks up. Orion Breen, Sean Giles running with him. Good work by Giles, then he slips and gives Orion Breen a bit of time, a bit of space. It'll fall to McLaughlin, who guides it over. This is some battle. Running back is Shane O'Brien. He's fouled with the free out. <laughs> Dippy, as they call him, Dearman McLaughlin with a wonderful score for St. Jude's. Well, not wonderful in a sense that it wasn't far out, but it was important. It was a big score is the way I should put it. Ger Hogan. McLaughlin, it comes off his stick and goes out for a line ball to Whitehall, Column kills. Hall Column Kills get a much needed free. Lee Gannon is fouled. Fox three up against St. Bridget's. And that game started at the same time as this. So as it stands, this group, well, the second place for it anyway, will be decided on scoring difference. One between them. I can only imagine the nerves and tension down the road at the Whitehall Column Kill Clubhouse if there's a few in to watch it. Not many, obviously, due to the COVID-19 restrictions and all that. And all around the Collins Avenue area. That's farm towards the post. Is that going to go over? We're all square. Dara Gray stepping up when he's needed. That was a wonderful score. Ger Hogan taking his time. 22 points apiece. Trying to sweep it up as Niall O'Connor. Well, they were quiet in the first half of the second half, if you know what I mean, before the water break. They've been better 
in the second period of the second half. Eddie Moore down the line, looking inside for Kyle Ryan. Ryan is dispossessed. Really good work by Alan O'Byrne. Tussle on for it here. It breaks into the path of Spellacy. Blocked down bravely by Shane O'Brien, who kicks it on. Looking for Fiona O'Rean Breen. O'Rean Breen pulls on it. It's going to hold up. Kia Murphy gets there, though, for Whitehall. Column kills. Dearman McLaughlin doesn't give up on it. McLaughlin still fighting for it. This is wonderful stuff. McLaughlin getting inside. He's surely foul. He's tugged back. He's won a free when he had absolutely no right to. What a wonderful player this guy is, Jeremy McLaughlin, in both football and hurling. Whitehall, Colm Kills don't want this to go over. Obviously. Hawks in a strange kind of way do because they need a bit of a favour here from St. Jude's. They look to win, but not by too much. He goes for Danny Sutcliffe. It deflects back out to Giles. Giles sends it away. Intercepted by Niall O'Connor. Niall O'Connor has that got the legs. It does, but only the legs to run wide. Mark McGuire. McGuire goes outside. Alan O'Byrne, OB as they call him. Batted into the path of John Carthy, but now trying to take it back is Connor Cummins. Cummins to Gannon. It's dropping dangerously. Hogan does wonderfully well, the goalkeeper. Great work from the Galway man between the sticks. Here's Kieran Mangan. Broken down. Kevin Lehiff. McLaughlin. Back to Carthy. Carthy's bearing in here. Carthy for goal. Oh, it's a wonderful strike. I think Ronan Murray was cut out by the flight of it somehow, but St. Jude's lead by three. Let's have another look. Was there a slight deflection on the way through? Really good work by St. Jude's. Carty got in behind. Hard to see there, but I think it might have taken some kind of touch on the way. St. Jude's won't care. Sent down the line by Kieran Hogan. But it was out of play, and it's a line ball for Whitehall Cullum Kills. Placing it on the ground is Spellacy. Lots of Wexford connections for Spellacy. Drops it into the square. St. Jude's defend it well. Away it goes from Devlin. Falls kindly for Whitehall Colm Kills. It's Connor Cummins. Doesn't play a particularly good ball. It's intercepted by Mangan. Mangan goes inside to Shane O'Brien. That's going to be intercepted again by Cummins. Giles. That's a really strong catch. It's Owen O'Donnell who's being tugged back here. He's got the free in. Well, Mark McGuire will argue had he let him roam on there, he could have caused a lot of problems for the Saints, but uh, he's practically given a point away. He'll go into the book, but I'm sure as a defender, he will tell you it's worth it. Gannon puts it over, two between them. Brilliant steal of the ball by Darren McLaughlin. A 
McLaughlin has to go off the stick here and does and gets the score and it's a three point game yet again. McLaughlin. He's had a great game on Owen McLaughlin. Wasn't named to start, replaced Owen Grant who misses out through injury. Owen O'Donnell tries to get there. The referee is given a free and he was playing advantage again. Sean Stack has had a decent game. Dermot McLaughlin is down for St. Jude's. He'd be a huge, huge loss. A Whitehall column kills player also getting some attention. Hawks lead by two late enough in that game. Lee Gannon, he's going for it this one to make it a two point match. And Lee Gannon does it. About to go into injury time, is there a couple of more twists in this Dublin Senior Hurling Championship game? Noonan hopes to help Whitehall Column Kills twist their way into the next round. Owen O'Donnell, he probably has to go for goal. Owen O'Donnell, really good defending, throwing himself at it was Alan O'Byrne. It's at the cost of a 65, but it could have been far, far worse. It's not a 65. It went straight wide. I thought O'Byrne got a touch on that. Kieran Mangan. His hurley is halved. Mangan tries to win it again, and they've won the free in. Whitehall column kills. With 30 seconds into injury time, I do wonder how much injury time there is. One of them will probably ask the ref. Gannon. It's wide. And the gap remains at two. It's intercepted by Niall O'Connor. Niall O'Connor puts it over. One between them and not long left. And Niall O'Connor making up for Lee Gannon's miss. He'd scored five points in the second half before that. Four of them from freeze. He scored 1-6 in the first half. It'll tell you how important he's been for um, for Whitehall Column Kills. McLaughlin's been very important for St. Jude's, but that wasn't a particularly good shot. Ronan Murray. Murray goes long. We must be into the last seconds now. It's lost. And then one back by Jude's. Ono Donald trying to turn it over. Now it's Cahill Ryan. Ryan looking for options. He finds one in Patrick Giles. Swept away and down the park by Kevin Lehiff. The referee blows the full-time whistle and St. Jude's have got the win. So the group and qualification from it between Jude's and Fox goes down to scoring difference and they face maybe a bit of a nervous wait now. St. Jude's have won by one. So Whitehall column kills are out. We know that. But who's going through to the next round? We await on word from the Fox Bridget's game. If Bridget's win, then it's uh, St. Jude's who are going through, or if St. Bridget's draw with Fox, then it's uh, St. Jude's who are going through. A one point win here, but is it enough? This is kind of tense and nervy. It reminds me of international football when uh, 
it's the final night of qualification and you're waiting on results from elsewhere to see what's going on and what's happening. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of this game. Danny Sutcliffe with a wonderful, wonderful point. He had a fantastic game. Got a couple of goals as well. One of them quite lucky. The other a penalty, which you could argue there was a bit of luck as well. Orl O'Donnell getting in behind here, winning the free. Lee Gannon, he was so important for Whitehall. Cullum kills, ended with something like 1-8. Maybe actually more, maybe 1-10, 1-11. Danny Sutcliffe, solid for Jude's all the way. And uh, it was tit for tat this game. Still no result in from the other game. Danny Sutcliffe. Well, if Jude's do go through, they can thank him in a major way. The final score of the other game is St. Bridget's 114, Fox 19 points. That means. We're not quite sure, we'll, we don't want to commit to it, we just want to check everything out here before we say the right or wrong thing. Jude's not overly jubilant over on the far side, so they're trying to calculate it as well. Keep watching the highlights. Are these scores and points and goals that you're watching enough to put St. Jude's through? Fiona Ryan Breen putting it through to Jeremy McLaughlin, that went over the crossbar again. Had they got a couple of more goals, they could have made sure of it. Remember, if we uh, go off the air and we're still uncertain as to what everything means, then you can find out via at Dub Official GAA. We'll keep going until we find out, so don't worry about that. When we're certain as to what's happening, we'll find out. Danny Sutcliffe, could that be the difference for St. Jude's? I'm not sure he meant that, because normally when you bounce the ball from a penalty like that, it's from a bit further out. Owen O'Donnell got this goal, and we thought, OK, our Whitehall column kill is going to get back into it. He had another goal chance afterwards, but unfortunately for him, he put it wide under massive pressure from Alan O'Byrne. Dermot McLaughlin, what a score that was from the dual star. Lee Gannon, for the most part good from freeze, but uh, missed one at the end, didn't miss that one. This was a wonderful score for Whitehall Column Kills and in a pressure moment. Danny Sutcliffe, he was going for it there. He probably knew his team needed goals because scoring difference is what's going to decide the Dublin Senior Hurling Championship uh, quarterfinal qualifiers, the second one from this group. So it's disappointment for Jude's and as I look at them, Live at the ground here, I think they've just been told that Fox are going through. Look at that devastation. They were on such a high a couple of minutes ago. We've had it confirmed. We wanted to double check it and make absolutely sure because you know with these things, there's so many complications and you don't want to say the wrong thing. And St. Jude's, despite a heroic performance here, go out of the Dublin Senior Hurling Championship. That opening day draw and then the loss to Bridget's has cost them. They drew with Fox on the opening day in O'Toole Park. They lost to St. Bridget's, a game that was shown live on Dubs TV, and look at the disappointment. It's devastation for them, and it's devastation for Whitehall Column Kills. Both of them, despite serving up a cracker today, go out there being applauded by the few mentors and supporters that they have here, and the body language says it all. Hurling is tough. It can give you such highs as it did a couple of minutes ago for St. Jude's, but they, like us, were waiting on word from uh, the other game, and the word is not good. Fox, much to their credit, have beaten St. Bridget's, and they go through a special word for folks who were in by no means a good position coming into today, but they did what they needed to do. They got a win against the odds, and you know, an awful lot of credit must go to them. So they go through to the quarterfinals. So the uh, quarterfinal lineup, I'm fairly certain, looks like this Fox against Nafina, uh, St. Bridget's against Kula, Lucan against Kilmacud Croaks, and Vincent's against Ballyboden St. Endas. That will be confirmed by the Dublin County Board over the next uh, couple of hours, and you'll be able to see everything that uh, is going to, um, all the schedule and all that. Uh, through the social media channels and everything um, in the next uh, couple of hours and days. Uh, yeah, just looking at it, confirmed. Nafina will play Fox, St. Bridges will play Kula, Croaks will play Lucan, and Vincent will play Paddy Bowden in the quarterfinals. It's desperate disappointment for Nafina, who gave it so much today, but unfortunately for them, despite a win against Whitehall Column Kills, they go out. Hard luck to Whitehall Column Kills, hard luck to St. Jude's. Well done to Fox, by the way, who have squeezed through against all odds but uh, they're a seriously good club and they've worked hard and they deserve their spot in the last eight in the Dublin Senior Hurling Championship the final score here in Parnell Park on a dramatic day 
St. Jude 313, Whitehall Comp Kills 316. Uh, congratulations and well done to Epon Stats today, who has never written so much in her life in sh such a short space of time. Um, and thanks to all the team as well uh, who put the broadcast together, including uh, Mossy Quinn and Derek Ryan from the Dublin County Board and all the guys from Playmaker Media. It's been a pleasure to be with you. We will be back uh, in the next while with hurling and football coverage. A couple of games will be on RT and TG Cahar as well, so uh, keep an eye out for those. Uh, but we'll end with the final score. That is not enough for St. Jude's to go through to the last eight. Uh, St. Jude 313, Whitehall Conkills 316. Thank you and goodbye.